Welcome to Celebrating Act Two, where today John and I are speaking with Bill Jordan, who embraces our boom every time we speak to him. Hey, Bill. <laughs> Always a pleasure to be back with you, and uh, thanks for having me back again. Hey, so guys, I have a, a problem I want to share with you and, and maybe get an answer if anybody has any solutions. I apparently snore. That's what my wife tells me. Whoa. I snore and I, I don't realize it. I can't control it. Do you guys snore? Apparently, I well, don't. Um, I tend to, but you're just finding this out? Yeah, well, not really. She's just fed up with it, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the... That that's the thing. Yeah. Well, I mean, I've always snored, I think, and this is not, you know, they always equate it to gaining weight or whatever, which I'm sure is a component maybe for some, but I've, I was snoring when I got married, Marianne and I got married 43 years ago. Mm. Um, I mean, I was snoring right and I weighed 142 pounds, something like that. So it wasn't a weight issue for me. It's just the way I guess I'm built. And I started snoring. And then as the years went on, she was noticing that I was, and I was noticing, I'd wake up gasping, hmm. like oh. for air, gasping for air, and I would wake up with a big headache, and I rarely get headaches, but I was waking up with a headache. Wow. Started looking into it a little bit, found out I may have sleep apnea, which are events when you stop breathing. Why we do this, I don't know. It's a nervous system thing or something. I don't, I don't know. Uh, I guess maybe when we lay back and things relax in your throat and shuts off your air, maybe that's what it is. But I went in years ago for a sleep study and they didn't show that I had enough stop breathing events to warrant insurance paying for my machine. So I didn't get one. The problem persisted. I went back for another study and that time I passed, meaning I failed and I got the machine. This is years ago, mm -hmm. old school stuff. And uh, man, I embraced it. Slept better, no more headaches, no really? more gasping. <clears throat> Felt right. rested. I wasn't jumping up out of bed. I was doing morning radio at the time. I wasn't waking up at 3.15 in the morning, you know, doing jumping jacks and cartwheels across the floor. But yeah. I wake up with my first feeling, thought being, I've got to get a nap today. I wasn't yeah. falling asleep at stoplights. I never fully fell asleep at stoplights, but if I was driving home from work early afternoon, I would be, I mean, I was having trouble at times driving, driving home and staying awake. So, mm. uh, are, you, wait, your, are, you, are you talking about like a CPAP machine? Uh, is that? Yep. Oh, wow. Yep. CPAP. So oh, anyway, then it got old and I was, I was having a hard time replacing the parts and it needed adjusting and, and I, I for either I forgot to take it or I didn't wear it one night and my wife said, you know, Marion said, hey, you didn't snore last night. And that kept going. It was like, did my body train itself to, to not snore? So I quit using it. And eventually I just threw the CPAP away. Probably about a year or so ago, I started snoring again. And Marion, for whatever reason, like a magic trick, she could just reach over, touch me, and I would stop snoring. I have no conscious knowledge of this. But the snoring kept persisting, and it wasn't working for her just to touch me or get me to turn over. I was snoring in any position. Went back in, back in March for a sleep study. I was stopping breathing at least 35 times an hour. Got mm -hmm. my machine. I'm back on it. I'm sleeping through the night. I didn't check my, uh, I've got it on an app, <clears throat> believe it or not. That's how high tech they've gotten it now. Uh, so according to tonight, I had dinner with friends last night, and we did have some strong coffee with dinner. I woke up at 4 o'clock this morning, like, wide awake. Uh, let's see. So I slept. <clears throat> Shouldn't be doing this live. Yeah, I only used it last night for about six hours. <clears throat> I did have two events an hour. My mask seal was pretty good. So this kind of keeps – they scored me an 89 for last night's sleep. So – um, more than likely, I'm in the upper 90s or at 100% for sleep. It's kind of neat to look yeah. at that and say, oh, yeah, I did sleep, you know. Um, I recommend it. John, you might want to get a sleep study if, if you think that you're gasping or running out of air, if your wife says you stop breathing. But it's still worth uh, taking the study. Yeah, it is. And there are a lot of people who are like, oh, man, I don't want anything on my face. I can't handle that. And it's like, I think. It's already a head game with you. If you don't think you're going to like it, you may not like it. It doesn't yeah. bother me at all. 
Yeah. Not a bit. <clears throat> Not but a bit. That's talking... the important thing. So, Bill, have yeah. you ever considered uh, one of those, uh, I've been seeing on TV, an implant of some kind? Do you know anybody who has them? <clears throat> yes. I've got a um, uh, female friend of mine, used to be in radio with her, and she got, the, I forgot if it's called Aspire or Inspire, but it's oh, a yeah. surgically implanted device. Seems to work well for her. She loves it. Implant. Um, but I just don't like the idea of putting something in my body that may or may not control my sleep or breathing. Yeah. You, you have any idea how that works? If it's an implant? No idea. I wasn't interested in it, so I didn't research it. I no. just know from her first hand account was that she loves her. So it's a viable option if that's something you well, want to try to do. You know, it's good to know there's, uh, there's hope for us uh, folks that do snore, or hope for my wife, really. And there might be people. So there's devices you put in your in your like you make your molds of your teeth, your upper and lower teeth, and it sets your jaw so that your air airway is open. I've tried those, but when I put that in my mouth, quite honestly, guys, I, I just slobber everywhere. I just I'm drooling all over the yeah. place. Well, it, that's another problem. A lot of people sleep and they tense up their jaw. The TMJ, uh, it's another problem. Creates headaches. Uh, I don't think that's related to sleep apnea, but yeah. Uh, well, sleep, you know, I, I, I've taken, maybe it's a wisdom that comes with age, I suppose, or just allowing for age. I never could accept uh, that if I were to be able to be blessed to live long, to live to 90, that medical science, if they tell you to sleep eight hours a day, that means I should have slept 30 years of my life. Wow. I got stuff to do. Well, think about it. Eight hours a day <laughs> for, 90, for 90 years, that's 30 years. Yeah. So that seems like a lot of time to be not doing anything. But anyway, I've definitely embraced uh, the notion of good sleep for good health. You bet. It, it's tied to so many things, cortisol, the stress hormone, testosterone, all kinds of stuff. And again, sleep is when your brain, I don't want to say reboots itself, but so apparently it's like that's when it just flushes stuff out of your out of itself is, is when you're in sleep. You yeah. need it mental health. My, here's a quick thing, just to let you know how important sleep is to a, in a dramatic way. My brother was in the Air Force and they put him into uh, SEER school, Survival, Escape, Resistance, and Evasion school. And he said before he went, it was going to be a three-day school. Guys coming out said, by the time that they are through with you in three days, you will, be you will believe that you are never going to leave. And he was laughing. He says, I've already got my orders cut. You know, three, four days I'm reporting for whatever. And he said at the end of three days, they all believed they would never leave. And the biggest thing, no sleep. Hmm. Oh, wow. Well, yep. so anyway, uh, here's uh, to you to a good night's sleep. Here we go. <laughs> Embrace the sleep. But then as yes, we as you guys and, and your show celebrating act two is for the, you know, the older set. And that's what my my mission with Embrace the Boom is embrace being a baby boomer. Discount everybody who says, okay, boomer. <laughs> you know, I like that. So anyway, live your life, forget your age, and embrace. Embrace the boom. Amen, brother. There you go. And go to sleep. For more on Celebrating Act 2, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends, Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life.